telling him that his retirement is due and that he must proceed on that retirement. It's left um, a bitter taste in the mouths of some uh, you know, civil society organizations, some anti-graft campaigners. We've heard some of them speak. Yesterday we heard from Vitus Azim and today, uh, God willing, we're going to hear from him again on what uh, some of these happenings, uh, how he's taken some of these happenings. But uh, before we connect with him, Let's go on Facebook. Some of you have already been sharing your thoughts. Let's find out what you've been saying so far. Mohammed Al Hassan, let's start from there. He says, seriously, we are sitting on a time bomb as a country. If any dictator can just do anything that he or she wants, or is he saying that all the citizens are fools or unreasonable from the unjusticiable unju removal of the formal independent EC chair in office, uh, finding difficulties working with his own appointed special prosecutor, uh, that he thought he could maybe, ah, tricky word, but yes, manipulate with forcefully retiring an independent auditor uh, general. The citizens of this country will one time resist uh, this dictatorship, you say, because the country does not belong to only one particular person, individual groups or society. Jan Justice says, funny country, give him two years contract uh, you want to fight. I don't quite get the thrust of that. Kinkala says, how old was Martin Amidu when he got appointed as special prosecutor? When his appointment was challenged on the grounds of old age, what was the ruling? Fighting corruption and, uh, okay, uh, let's leave it at that. Raphael says, all I can say is the Fifth Republic is eminent. You should embrace, your, you should embrace yourself for it. Uh, that's quite a suggestion there because we are in the Fourth Republic. So what you are saying insinuates quite uh, a lot if, if you read between the lines. Uh, Adeline, uh, yeah, um, okay, so let's skip that one. Asempa Erna says, the truth is the man is 60 years and must go home. Well, we'll delve into that truth. That is why someone like me, well, I would like the matter to go to court so some of these matters can be uh, clarified. Councillor Grant says, too bad, very, very bad. Why are we doing this to ourselves? So you can see from the trend of messages that at least people are upset with the situation a lot of those commenting adura young says how old is the president himself well it has to do with the regulations when it comes to who can be president and all of that constitutionally nothing bars him you just need to be 40 years uh, and above amonu amonu says this man is for me one out of the lot in fighting corruption for ghana it's unfortunate he is in conflict with the incumbent government the mpp government must be very careful as they can lose the confidence of the people uh, the confidence the people have in them especially when the sp's office failed uh, greatly that is what you say we now have vitus azim anti-graft campaigner and former executive director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative, joining us for this all-important conversation. Ms. Azim, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining the conversation. You're welcome. Right, so yesterday we were thinking, what, we're in March, and maybe April, May, June, we had about some three months for uh, Domelevo to return to office and maybe clear his desk, uh, get rid of some of the pending matters he had been interrogating. But here we are, it doesn't look as though that is going to happen with that release by uh, the office of the president. Did you see it coming? Well, no, I wouldn't say that I saw it coming, but I had, I, some of us had called on the president to come out with something. Because right. Mr. Domingo had refused to appear before the audit service board, said that they are not the appointed authority, and that the president was the appointed authority. So we thought that to... to, to, to to resolve this matter, the president has come out to say something. But we didn't know, I didn't know which direction what he was going to say was going to be. Okay, so at least you wanted the president to say something, and he has said something. It's official uh, from uh, as far as his end is concerned. Domelevo, as far as the president sees it, has retired. Are you disappointed? No. Why not? No. Because, you see, when he was asked to go on a simulated leave in 2020, some of us already said that it was a way to push him out. And I thought, I, I believe they had thought that the simulated leave would have lasted during his retirement in, in June 2021. Mm. 
Unfortunately, the one seventy six days, you realize that even the first number was increased to one sixty seven. Unfortunately, that did not still help them. But once they determined to do what they wanted to do, they had to now come out with something else. And they decided to dig into the background to find out that there were some certain problems with this record. But I know that if you were appointed by an institution, you're supposed to have a form which would provide your personal details, your nest of kin, your age, date of birth, and all that. And so I just think that they didn't see all this. He didn't have this personal records in his file. He didn't have the confidential file at the presidency. So why all of a sudden? So when the, the Audit Service Board came out with this again, the Audit Service Board is a member of the Audit Service Board, you know that. So when they came out with this thing, it means that they had all these decisions behind his back. It wasn't discussed. And then, of course, we expected the president, what actually we expected the president to say was give him a chance to also defend himself, provide contrary uh, data, I mean, information on his, his personal details. This hasn't happened. Now, and we know, hmm. and we know that there are pending issues that he started. And if they are giving these three months, you would have probably taken them up and made sure that he brought them to conclusion. And that would not be in the interest of some of the people that were involved. Hmm. Now, you speak about what they wanted to do. Specifically, that's a line you used in your last submission, what they wanted to do. Uh, so you feel, as far as what the sequence of events, what you've seen, you feel he was being pushed out and that there was going to be every move made to ensure that that end is achieved. Is that, is that how you feel? Well, that's how I see it. I may be wrong, but that's how I see it. Because we give an example. They have, look, apart from the Dumelubo, which public officer or head of an institution has been forced to go on accumulated leave? And they are there. You know, the chief director, some even have been, they have renewed, even though they are sisters, they have renewed, extended their, 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 their ten of office. Some are beyond 65, and they are still serving. And so it, 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 it's not surprising that this is happening, as Mr. Domolevo himself said, if you fight corruption, corruption will fight. Mm. Is that to suggest that if Daniel Yao Domolevo had been or acted like maybe, and I use this cautiously, some auditor generals before him, if he hadn't done some of the things he has done, if he hadn't questioned some of the things he has questioned, if he hadn't surcharged some of the people he had surcharged, Maybe, uh, from your end, we wouldn't be at this point where we're having this discussion today. Well, you cannot just conclude that way because there was another issue. The fact that he was appointed by the NGC after the 2016 election created the impression that the NDC was bringing their man to deal with people in the incoming government. So even if Mr. Domelo was doing the thing, did not do some of the things that he did, you cannot just, you cannot conclude that maybe they wouldn't have still tried to, to hound him out of office. Okay. Now there have been legal questions, you know, with regard to whether the audit service has the power to do what it is doing, uh, and that the auditor general actually does not, is not subservient uh, to them, but only the appointing authority. But it is also based on the recommendations or the revelations from the audit service that uh, the president also based on that is arriving at these decisions. When you look at the legal question, what do you see? And do you feel this is a matter like in the E.K. Sala uh, case from the Buzia regime that may be should travel to court, should test the system, maybe to clarify matters? Well, you see, the audit service may not have the powers to do that. But the audit service board is sure that the president, they have the, the, the backing of the president. And so they come out to this, to this thing, and then the president comes out to so see the action. They have provided the information, they have made the recommendations. You cannot... Uh, since he is not being fired, you cannot uh, challenge the, uh, the power of the president to remove him from office. I'm not sure you can do that. 
And so, well, you may go to court. But also, especially if the, 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 the data, the information that they have provided about Mr. Dolo is not correct. For example, what does Nick say with regards to the state of health? Are there other sources of information that you can verify that what the other self is saying is what is actually the situation? So unless that information is not true, it will be difficult to actually go to court and fight this matter. The president has not fact. The president has said that you are due to go to retirement. So please go to retirement. Can you challenge the data? Is there information to challenge that? If there's no information, then it will be difficult for you to go to court and and, and, and succeed. Right. Let me at this juncture uh, welcome aboard uh, Mr. Edem Sinanu as well, also an anti-graft campaigner, co-chair Citizens Movement Against Corruption. Mr. Sinanu, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us on the AM show. And thank you for having me. Right. Uh, that's quite a baritone this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, right, right before I come to you, just because I've started this uh, end with um, Mr. Azim already. Mr. Azim, uh, just a final bit before I go to uh, Mr. Senanu. So we're talking about a legal process, but how about the court of public opinion? From where you sit, even if this matter does not travel to court with whether or not the, the audit service is clothed with the power to do some of the things it has done, that court of public opinion, we just took some messages from social media where almost everybody responding to it is saying something didn't go right. Maybe he's being hounded out and all of that. Do you feel the court of public opinion is going to crucify this administration and maybe the audit service for this decision? Yes, I believe that. I believe that uh, the court of public opinion will definitely crucify the chair of the audit service board, the audit service board, and this administration for how they have handled it. And, and you know, we'll give you examples of other people who are killed for retirement, they have extended their times and all that. So definitely, the court of public opinion, if only it has any value, to crucify this administration. Let me come now to Mr. Senanu. Thank you for joining us once more. Uh, any surprises in there? Uh, Vitus Azim, who's on the other end, had intimated that he would want um, Daniel Domelevo to actually go to office yesterday, which he did. But now we have that letter officially from the presidency saying, well, you've retired. Thank you for your services. We wish you the very best. How did that strike you when you saw it or heard of it? Well, I was utterly disappointed. And I, I, I keep seeing that disappointment is... Uh, uh, it hardly expresses how I feel about it. Um, uh, Mr. Domlevo encapsulates for many of us uh, the kind of person who wants to do his very best for his country and uh, has done so. Um, and for someone who just wants to do the right thing, especially standing up at a point where all kinds of things are thrown at you, um, I feel very embarrassed about how he has been treated. I'm wondering how the international community will be capturing this. Um, he went home as a Ghanaian, came back, and is being called a Togolese. Um, it doesn't send the right message. Um, it sends all the wrong messages. All the young men and women who want to be public officers and do what is right, what does it say to them? When we put out applications for people to consider these positions in the future will we have the caliber and competence of of of, of the Ghanaian who is a professional and who want to serve i doubt it looking at the trend of things that have transpired so this is really bad news for ghana and i can't wrap my mind around what it is that prevents us from allowing mr dom Levo to finish his three months Apart from the fact that in his tenure, he saved this country billions of cities. And I am sure if we do a calculation of every day he spent in office per the millions of cities he saved, there was every likelihood that in the three months he was going to save us more. Perhaps that may be a, a reason, a root cause, why we find ourselves where we are today. 
but that's a shame and it's a real a real um it's a tragedy as far as i'm concerned um i'm not quite sure how the government expects to get us moving forward and understanding or appreciating or believing their commitment to the fight against corruption now you say all that you're saying and uh very valid point you're making but here's another angle what is wrong is wrong and if we're talking about you know creating an impression that your age is what it isn't especially in legal terms uh, where certain offices are concerned you're talking about nationality if you knowingly you know uh, mislead the system to 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 think that you are something you are not these come with consequences uh, we saw in in the case of the former ppa uh, boss how he supposedly also saved ghana some sums of money but in the end he had to step aside because he had also supposedly done certain things that did not inure to the benefit of the country so uh, he yes he may have saved us a lot but if he has breached the law should the long arms of the law not touch domelevo well to be honest, there is no evidence that he has breached any law. The information put out suggests that when he was 17 or 18 years old, he filled a SNIT form and materially got some facts wrong. When he was about 22 or 23, he recognized he had made some mistakes because he had additional further and better particulars and went back, made the changes um most likely supported by affidavit and has served this nation and other nations creditably uh, is it likely on the face value of the facts that 25 years ago mr daniel domevo had an advantage an incentive to make out of making those changes very unlikely so on the face of the facts, and then he, he's able to adduce information to his grandfather, his father, his mother, where he comes from. Ordinarily, what should happen is an administrative process, most likely triggered by the Public Services Commission, or which other unit or entity um, facilitated his engagement, to do or to engage a third party, like go cross-check this, whilst the person still occupies the office, because this is an independent institution of state. We are talking about the pillars of our democracy. We are talking about an institution that is key in holding accountable the executive. So if the executive at the forefront of doing investigations, of claiming certain things, it flies in the face of the spirit of the constitution and what we want to achieve by the separation of powers. And so, um, unfortunately, I don't think that the Audit Service Board is seized with the mandate, not the authority to do what it did, let alone um, um, suggest he should go home. I don't think that the president respectfully is seized um, with the thing to say, as far as we are concerned, by last year you retired, so go home. Um, but, but he's the appointing he authority, Mr. Senanu, he is the appointing authority. Well, appointing authority does not mean that constitutionally, therefore, um, um, it allows you to proceed to, def to then exit the person. And I think that's the point we've tried to make over and over again. The appointing authority in terms of the appointment, that's fine. But it does not automatically, therefore, mean that you are the disappointing authority. Appointing authority doesn't automatically mean that you are the disappointing authority. That's the point. And it's for good reason. It's to the extent that we don't want um, branches of government that are supposed to be there to effectively make our democracy work, then it becomes susceptible, um, uh, becomes subsumed under the executive, and then we can't have the kind of traction we want to see. So all I'm saying is that bottom line, ideally, administrative processes to confirm whether indeed and in fact there was some criminality should have been happening parallel to the fact that the person is in office because we haven't yet established a case.
the man himself, and this is natural that you make an error, you notice it, you go back, you correct it to all extents and purposes. And his argument of, look, I'm a Yao. If you go to 1st June 1960, you don't get a Yao. 1st June 1961 gives you a Yao. With parents who were illiterate, um, I even at one point forgot my, 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 how old I was and my wife had to correct me. So I, uh, well, I think that we've made our point. As civil society, this issue is bigger than Daniel Domnevo. There's a reason why we are in court trying to get an interpretation on, on the law. Uh, but beyond that, it also leaves um, a certain impression um, I think it compels us to rethink what our policy space is like. We need to get greater clarity on our laws and policies to prevent this from continuing to happen. Otherwise, the next time we're going to have a president who sends the electoral commissioner on leave, on accumulated leave during elections, and uh, that will bring another crisis. Uh, to hit the nail on the head, so do you feel Domelevo has been hounded out? Would you, would you term it as that? Has the system hounded Domelevo out? Yes, and I will not say that the system has hounded Domelevo out. I'll say the system has hounded our Auditor General out, and um, a very good Auditor General at that. Um, so yes, the system has hounded out the Auditor General because he has been doing such a good job of auditing the public sector and of protecting the press uh, that belongs to the good citizens of this country. Okay, uh, last batch of questions. Uh, for you, you are pursuing this, this court case. What is the end you hope to, to achieve or you want this matter to go to court to achieve? Uh, a restoration of Domelevo to come back for another three months to, to, to what end, basically? As I already pointed out, the court case is simply about establishing that the executive, which includes the president, do not have the legal right or power to begin to instruct leaders of independent institutions of state to go on leave and on other such matters. It sets a dangerous precedent and we want a clear ruling on this so that it does not occur in the future. As I pointed out, we are in a danger, we're in a dangerous position where one day um, we could have the electoral commissioner sent home at a time that is critical, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's to make sure that this dangerous precedent that has been set cannot be used again, just in the same way as somebody say, oh, Professor Mill sent uh, Professor Dwyer Jiman on so, 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 therefore we are also, it was a precedent. No, we think that that precedent ought to be curtailed because it doesn't portend good for this country. So that's the substantive issue. Um, and, and that's what we are trying to achieve by being in the Supreme Court. Right. Let me wrap up with uh, Mr. Vitus Azim, also an anti-graft campaigner. Thank you for your patience uh, holding for us. Uh, to wrap up, I would ask you, so the cases that were initiated by Daniel Yao Domelevo, uh, what happens to them now? What do you feel are the prospects for those cases, especially now that he is retired? Well, my guess is as good as yours. You know, just the day after Mr. Domelevo went on compulsory leave, or cumulatively, the following day, the one who was acting came and said, oh, we've checked, we've inspected the documents, and we are satisfied with what Mr. Osafemabu has provided. And so what do you expect? And that's why some of us are worried that they fear that if he had come back for the three months like he would have, excuse me, he would have been able to take up some of these matters to bring them to conclusion. It will no longer happen. Of course, there are people in public service that support Mr. Domingo for what he was doing. But it's not everybody that supports him. And the president would appoint somebody that he thinks would uh, go by to control his, to whatever he wants. And so I don't expect too much from what will happen after Mr. Rolo has gone. 
are, are you suggesting, Mr. Azim, just to, just to clarify, are you suggesting, are you saying that Mr. President Nanad Dankwa Kufuado will uh, put someone there who will pander to his whims and caprices? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, from all past experience, such appointments, there are always implications or perceptions of, okay, let me say perceptions of partisan affiliation, or at least people who tend to uh, do what the, the ruling party would like. I am not, I can, I'm, I'm not definitely, I'm not in the presidency, I cannot say that, but you cannot rule out that possibility. And especially, as I said, what happened just after he was, Mr. Dolo went on leave? That was too embarrassing that just the day after the man goes on leave, you, you are acting and you just come and carry the person. There was that, I mean, what, what impression do you want to give to the rest of the, the country? Mr. Azim, this is where we're going to have to wrap up the conversation, but we're very grateful uh, to both of you for your time with us. Adam Sinanu, anti-graft campaigner, co-chair, Citizens Movement Against Corruption. And they are pursuing this matter in court. Baitiz Azim, also an anti-graft campaigner. Gentlemen, thank you so much and do have a good day. So here we are. One legal question, if you like, uh, not fully answered, but we're moving on to another one starting from the year 2020. It's all about the election uh, petition. And today, it all goes down at the apex.